Hi and welcome back. I'm Dr. Parvati Raghavan. Let's learn about ameloblastoma. It is a rare tumor and only 1% of oral tumors are ameloblastoma. It is a benign odontogenic tumor. Benign means that it does not degrade health in general or threaten life. Odontogenic means derived from tissue that give rise to teeth. These tumors can be derived from cells that are either epithelial, mesenchymal or mixed, depending on which component of the two germ gives rise to the neoplasm. Ameloblastoma is an odontogenic tumor of epithelial origin. So the cells found in this tumor are all epithelial cells. Breaking down the word ameloblastoma, amel means enamel, blastos means germ, as in germinate or develop, oma means a swelling or tumor, which is formed by proliferating cells. To understand for now, let us remember blasts as baby cells. Even though the tumor is named ameloblastoma, it is a tumor of enamel organ type of cells which do not differentiate to form enamel. This is an enamel organ. Here you can see the different type of epithelial cells inside it in different colors, blue, yellow, etc. What happens here is that these baby cells are pluripotent which means that they have the potential to give rise to a number of different type of cells such as the cells that can form enamel, cells that can form dentin, cells that can form periodontal ligament, etc. Some of these pluripotent cells remain resting in different stages during the process of tooth development. That is, they are not growing up into adult cells that form enamel, dentin, etc. These are called the remnants. Some of these remnant baby cells suddenly then decide that now they want to proliferate and this is what gives rise to the tumor which we call as ameloblastoma. The tumor can originate from one remnants of dental lamina. These are called as the rest of series found remaining in the jaw bones or the gingival connective tissue. This is the oral epithelium. Here you have the dental lamina. It is a band of epithelial tissue which is the first evidence of tooth development seen in utero. This is the enamel organ with all this different type of cells inside. So number two, the tumor can originate from remnants of enamel organ and this is known as reduced enamel epithelium seen as an envelope on the crown of an unerupted tooth. Once the tooth erupts, this of course gets worn off on its own. Number three, we have HERS, that is Herdwig's epithelial root sheath remnants. These are called as epithelial recif malasis found in the periodontal ligament. Apart from these, the tumor can also originate from epithelium of dentigerous cyst, which you can see here. It is a fluid filled sac that forms by accumulation of fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium and the crown of a tooth. It is seen over the top of an unerupted tooth or partially erupted tooth. Coming back to the main topic, the tumor can also form from the basal cells of the oral mucous membrane. These are the cell layers of oral mucous membrane. Down below, these cuboidal cells are the basal cells. In number 6, we have heterotropic epithelium from extra oral sites, that is other parts of the body, especially the pituitary gland. Heterotropia means that along with the original tissue belonging to an anatomical location, another type of tissue is present, which is not physiological to that particular area. So here, apart from odontogenic cells, the cells of the pituitary gland can also be seen in the tumor. The World Health Organization defines ameloblastoma as a benign, that means it doesn't metastatize to other organs, but locally aggressive tumor with a high tendency to recur. It is called aggressive because it has a high tendency to recur. You keep removing it and it keeps coming back. It consists of proliferating odontogenic epithelium lying in a fibrous stroma. So there are two components in this tumor, epithelial cells and holding these cells together or supporting them, the connective tissue. Odontogenic epithelium means cells capable of forming dental tissue. 
these cells keep on growing in numbers and form tumor. Clinical features Usually seen in adults, patient usually visits the dentist with functional problems like displaced teeth and malocclusion in the affected area of the jaw. Clinically, this area may appear normal. The color of the oral mucosa overlying the lesion also appears normal. There is often a history of trauma like tooth extraction, removal of cyst and this will be very old history so you will need to dig up the patient's history. It is asymptomatic and slow growing without pain or swelling and because of this and absence of pain or swelling there is no motivation to get it checked. It continues to grow for many years and only if there is secondary infection pain occurs. The tumor can grow very large disfiguring the face. Looking at the location, it is seen both in maxilla as well as the mandible. 80% occurs in the mandible, especially the molar ramus area. Lesions in the maxilla are mostly seen in the antrum, it's a cavity in the bone that is sinus, floor of the nose, molar area. In maxilla, we should be on the lookout for any invasion to the nearby structures like the orbit and the cranium because this could prove to be fatal. So, how do we detect the presence of ameloblastoma? Lesions can be detected by dental X-rays. X-rays show radiolucent cysts that are sac-like pockets of darker areas. This indicates an osteolytic process is going on, that is, bone is getting destroyed, which causes root resorption and displacement of the teeth involved. Now, this can be unicystic or multicystic. An important point to note is that though they are called a cystic, ameloblastoma is non-encapsulated. Unicystic type is seen as a single large cyst, which can arise from pre-existing dentigerous cyst or impacted tooth. Multicystic types are seen as a very large radiolucent cyst especially in the molar ramus region with radiolucencies within it. Bony septa extend into it giving a well-defined appearance and the lesion looks like it contains many compartments or chambers. These are the septa or partitions. Now these compartments and partitions give rise to a typical pattern to the ameloblastoma, which are called as the honeycomb appearance or soap bubble appearance. There is slow damage to the bone which can cause thinning and expansion of the cortical plate with erosion through the cortex, deforming it but rarely perforating it. This shows up as a big swelling of the face. Such lesions on palpation give a peculiar eggshell crackling sensation. Although radiographs help us in identifying ameloblastomas, the size of the lesion is estimated by CT scans. This is because the tumor is not encapsulated, so it is more extensive than seen in the radiograph. The final diagnosis should be confirmed by histopathology. Moving on, this is a simplified classification of ameloblastoma. If you are a student watching, please follow the classification taught to you. There are three types, conventional, unicystic and peripheral. Conventional is also what we call as multicystic. Histologically, it can be divided into six subtypes, follicular, plexiform, acanthomatous, basal cell, desmoplastic and granular cell. I will put up another video with lots of pictures to explain the different six types of conventional ameloblastomas. Going back to unicystic, again it can be histologically divided into one luminal, two intraluminal and three mural. Lastly, we have the peripheral type of ameloblastoma. Two important facts about the multicystic type is that they are the most common type and have higher recurrence rate. In the unicystic, we have three types, uh, the luminal. A lumen is the inside space and this lesion is confined to the cyst lining. 
two is intraluminal these grow into the lumen of the cyst and three mural mural means relating to or occurring in the wall and this type invades the wall of the cyst and the last type is the peripheral ameloblastoma and it is the least common type it is an abnormal growth confined to the gingival or alveolar mucosa without involving the underlying bone it is common in the mandibular premolar area and can arise from remnants of the dental lamina the vestibular lamina or from pluripotent cells of the basal cell layer of the oral mucosa or from minor salivary glands now pluripotent cells are the cells having the potential to give rise to several different type of cells this is a peripheral ameloblastoma this is often mistaken to be a fibrous epulis in most cases there is no radiological evidence of bone involvement but a superficial bone erosion known as cupping or saucerization may be present when planning treatment of ameloblastoma we should take into account the following the size the location and duration of the lesion also the amount of soft tissue involvement the presence of cortical bone erosion and the age of the patient younger patients are more resilient to surgery than geriatric patients and the aim of the whole treatment is to maintain the quality of life depending on all these factors treatment may be conservative or radical conservative treatment would be for aesthetics and restoration of function under this we have cryosurgery which uses extreme cold produced by liquid nitrogen or argon gas to destroy abnormal tissue cells then there is cautery which removes lesion by burning it and this can be done chemically or electrically enucleation is the surgical removal of the whole tumor intact from the adjacent bone one of my professors gave this example that Enucleation is like removing the white of the coconut intact without leaving any bit in the shell. This can be done for the intraluminal type of unicystic ameloblastomas. Enucleation of the ameloblastoma is followed by bone curettage. Curettage is the scraping out of the lesion along with a part that is 1 to 2 mm of the adjacent bone. This process induces fresh bleeding which fills up the cavity that helps in new bone formation. Recurrence is highest with curettage that is 90 to 100%. This is because even a little bit of the tissue left behind in the bone can act as a point of origin from where new cells can proliferate. Next we might think of treatment by radiation therapy because after all ameloblastoma is a tumor. but ameloblastoma has been found to be highly radio resistant and has led to radiation induced sarcoma in the past so this is not an option to be given to the patient opposite of conservative treatment is radical treatment which is the complete removal of the tumor and this is done by block excision of the lesion including a good margin of the unaffected bone here the continuity of the inferior and posterior border is preserved if lower border of the mandible is also involved in the lesion then resection is done here a segment is removed without maintaining the continuity of the bone if there is cortical invasion forming a large lesion hemisection is required here one side of the maxilla or mandible is surgically removed in all these uh, radical procedures a margin of 1.5 to 2 cm beyond the radiological limit is involved to ensure that all microcysts are removed and immediate bone reconstruction with iliac crest grafts or microvascular fibular flaps is performed to repair the jaw for large unicystic lesions another conservative approach being tested out is decompression as an initial procedure to reduce the size of the lesion 
here a cyst opening is prepared and preserved. Continuous drainage reduces the pressure from within the cyst, which allows new centripetal bone growth, that is bone growth towards the center from the bone wall of the cyst, which of course takes some time. And this can be followed by conservative surgical treatment, that is enucleation, curettage, etc. Now the recurrence rate after curettage is about 90 to 100 percent. But after resection, it is only 13 to 15 percent. In unicystic lesions, luminal and intraluminal respond well to conservative treatment, but the mural type show higher recurrence rates and need radical treatment. The treatment of ameloblastoma remains controversial because it is a benign but locally aggressive tumor with a high recurrence rate. The most Consistent fact is that regardless of the type and size of ameloblastoma, the complete removal of the neoplasm will cure the patient. Prognosis of ameloblastoma is good since it is a localized problem. Death doesn't occur unless local invasion involves vital structures, which we talked about, like in the maxilla if the lesion is closer to the orbit or the cranium. Recurrence after initial surgery may take 10 years or longer. So all treatment need to have a long-term follow-up. Key points that summarize a lesion to be called as ameloblastoma is that it is benign, odontogenic but locally aggressive with a high recurrence rate, originates from epithelial remnants of tooth-forming organ, Clinical features are that it is asymptomatic, slow-growing bone lesion without pain or swelling. Palpation can show eggshell crackling sensation. 80% occurs in mandible, especially molar ramus area. Special radiographic feature would be honeycomb appearance and soap bubble appearance. Three types, unicystic, multicystic and peripheral. Histologically, six type. Treatment, conservative or radical. Aim of treatment is complete removal of the neoplasm and long term follow up to watch out for recurrence. Now, if you're watching this video for your exams, make sure to pick up only those points that are going to give you marks. Thank you for watching. Do leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, share, and if you enjoy this video, want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also click on any of these links given here to watch a video of your choice.